Okay, so in this lesson, let's talk about event bridge topologies, which ultimately boils down to two axes of whether to have a centralized event bus or have an event bus per service. And if you have one account for all of your workloads or multiple accounts. Nowadays, it's widely accepted that you should pursue a multi-account strategy, which insulates your workloads from each other and limit the blast radius of any security breach as well as problems related to AWS limits. So for the purpose of this lesson, we're only going to focus on multi-account topologies. In the single bus multi-account pattern, you can have separate accounts for different workloads or services. Here, let's assume you have one account per service per environment, and we have two separate services here, each with its own accounts. And there's a centralized event bus, which resides in its own account. Typically with this configuration, the event buses are created and managed by a platform team or a DevOps team. And the event buses in the workload account are created as part of the landing zone in AWS organizations. The event publishers in the workload account will publish events to the central bus directly. This is possible thanks to resource-based policies, which you can set up against the central event bus to allow the workload accounts to publish events to it. But you can't receive events directly from the central bus. For that to happen, you can set up the event bridge rule in the central event bus and specify the target as the event buses in the workload account. Unfortunately, that's just what you have to do to subscribe to events from an event bus in a different account. You have to have event bridge forward the events from one event bus to another. But once the events are received in the workload account event bus, the workload account subscribers can subscribe to this event from their local event bus. And that's the single bus multi-account pattern. The nice thing about having a centralized event bus is that you have one source of truth for all of your events, which also gives you a central archive of all events in the system and a centralized schema registry as well. And also one place to manage all of your policies which is great from a governance point of view. And for your subscribers, it's great to be able to find and subscribe to any event in one place, making life a lot easier where you need to develop a new feature and to subscribe to a new event from a different service. And you can do that against the same event bus. But from an infrastructure point of view, the event buses are owned by a platform team. So it requires coordination between the service and the platform teams on any changes related to these event buses or to update the event rules, and this coordination can have an impact on your developer velocity. And with the central event bus, you're also more likely to run into various service limits, like the number of event rules, or the number of uh, put event operations per second, and so on. And the central event bus is a single point of failure. If anything happens to it, then no events can be published or received. So that's definitely a risk that's worth considering. But from a development workflow point of view, the big drawback is that it doesn't work well with ephemeral environments because these event buses are owned by a separate team and are not part of my application stack. So when I create an ephemeral environment for my application, the event buses sit outside of that. It's possible to work around this limitation with a simple tweak, but let's talk about the other main approach first, which is the multibus multi-account pattern where once again, we have service specific accounts, but this time the event buses are owned and managed by the service teams. So they have more autonomy about their environment. The service will publish events to their own event bus and they subscribe to domain events from the same local event bus. And other services can subscribe to their integration events by once again, creating an event rule in the publisher account event bus and have the event delivered to the subscriber account event bus, because again, that's just what you have to do to subscribe to events in another account event bus. And of course, if other accounts want their events, they have to do the same thing as well. The great thing about this approach is that there's less coordination between teams. The service teams have more autonomy of their environment. But when they need to subscribe to events from other services, the subscriptions are now distributed and are more complicated to deal with. You need to know which service and account has the event you need and then create a cross account subscription for that event bus. And you have to do this with every service who has the events that you're interested in. 
which increases the coupling between services and the respective teams. And you can end up with having multiple event archives as well, which makes replaying events from multiple services very challenging. But it does work great with ephemeral environments, which is always a big upside for me. As to which one is better for you, it's always going to depend on your requirements. Maybe the single point of failure with a central event bus is enough to put you off the idea of it. But personally, I generally prefer the single bus approach because it makes most things easier, except that it doesn't work well with ephemeral environments. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.